Today, I'm just doing a short video for the truthers out there who are looking into alternative history theories. I want to show you guys what the brand new AI program called Sora is capable of and how that relates to these theories. Sora was recently released in the last few days, and it's a text-to-video AI generator that creates realistic-looking videos based on simple text input. For example, here's what it generates if you type in anything like, show footage of a town in the Old West during the Gold Rush. Just look at how convincing it looks. The amount of detail here is absolutely insane. Even the movement of the horses and people looks much more realistic than what AI was capable of before. Really, the only problem is the frame rate is a bit choppy. But other than that, most people would be convinced this is real if they didn't look too closely. It almost looks like a scene right out of a highly produced movie or documentary. And this was all instantly generated just based on a simple text input. If I simply pause it and apply a filter to it, how many would buy this as a genuine historical photo from the gold rush? With the way most people believe anything coming from the official narrative, most would believe it's genuine. While I show more previews of Sora's AI videos, here's my point. As any truther knows, the controllers of this world are decades ahead of the rest of the public when it comes to the technology they have access to. This means that, at the least, they've had access to AI capabilities exceeding even this for decades already. So imagine what they could be doing, and may have already done in terms of deceiving us with AI video and images. Imagine the fake historical narratives they could weave with technological abilities like this. Particularly before the public even knew what AI is capable of. Here's a little story that makes me think they have been doing precisely that. When I was growing up, I was very interested in the history of the 1800s. I had a fascination with that time period and wanted to know anything I could about it. So I spent a lot of my free time researching the 1800s. I remember looking into the earliest videos that I could find to see if any existed from as early as the 1800s. And I vividly remember learning that the earliest video in existence was from 1901 by the Lumiere brothers. But now, years later, when I researched the same thing, there are videos in existence from as far back as 1870. I also remember that the oldest photographs were from the 1860s. There was a lot of emphasis on how revolutionary the US Civil War photos were back then, supposedly being the first of their kind. But now there are photographs from the 1820s. So my point is the history we're taught by the controllers seems to have a very fluid nature to it. It's always updating and changing itself to align with whatever direction the controllers need for their current agenda. Many may think that's not possible to update and change history on the fly like that particularly if they don't realize the capabilities that they've had access to in terms of AI and technology. But when you realize that they're always 50 years ahead of the public, at the very least, in terms of technological capabilities, it becomes much more plausible. I mean, seriously. Just look at how realistic and convincing these AI-generated videos are. It's both fascinating and terrifying at the same time. These are all being generated by just a simple text prompt. That's it. The level of detail and realism produced by the AI is downright scary. It's to the point where I can no longer tell what's real and what isn't. And I think that's the entire point. The controllers have been pushing the idea of relative truth for ages already, but it's picking up in recent years at a faster and faster pace. The idea that a man can be a woman just because he subjectively feels like it is already being normalized. When, just a few decades ago, Everyone knew the idea a man can be a woman was a joke as recently as 1979. Here's a clip from Monty Python proving it. Why are you always on about women, Stan? I want to be one. What? I want to be a woman. From now on, I want you all to call me Loretta. What? It's my right as a man. Well, why do you want to be Loretta, Stan? I want to have babies. You want to have babies? It's every man's right to have babies if he wants them. But you can't have babies. Don't you oppress me. I'm not oppressing you, Stan. You haven't got a womb. Where's the fetus going to just take? You're going to keep it in a box? Here, I've got an idea. Suppose you agree that he can't actually have babies, not having a womb, which is nobody's fault, not even the Romans but that he can have the right to have babies. 
Good idea, Judith. We shall fight the oppressors for your right to have babies, brother. Sister, sorry. What's the point? What? What's the point of fighting for his right to have babies when he can't have babies? It is symbolic of our struggle against oppression. Symbolic of his struggle against reality. That's from 1979, back when everyone knew it's a joke for a man to be a woman just because he subjectively feels like it. That's why it was presented as comedy. Only a few decades ago, everyone knew that objective truth doesn't change to match anyone's subjective feelings that contradict it. But these days, subjectivist extremism is commonplace. That Monty Python skit sounds like a conversation you might hear on any atheist or secular podcast today, and they're dead serious about it. It's easy to see how this AI technology is only going to amplify this subjectivist extremism. When the lines between objective truth and fantasy are blurred to the point where our senses can no longer differentiate the two, people begin imagining that truth is whatever they want it to be. And then, the controllers simply need to program people such that they want to believe the mainstream narrative, which is actually Satan's narrative. That's all it takes to get the majority to believe anything the controllers want. Simply program people such that they want to believe it. Any truther is familiar with cognitive dissonance. But check out what Leon Festinger, the originator of cognitive dissonance theory, concluded. Coping with the nuances of contradictory ideas or experiences is mentally stressful. It requires energy and effort to sit with those seemingly opposite things that all seem true. Festinger argued that some people would inevitably resolve the dissonance by blindly believing whatever they wanted to believe. So this explains why all the NASA astronauts speak of being in space as if it's the most fun thing ever, and why they're always smiling on the International Space Station, despite the fact one wrong move could end their life at any moment if it were real. And it explains why all the Hollywood movies make space travel seem so exciting and fun and why there are so many cartoons for children designed to make outer space seem like a blast. It's because the controllers fully understand how cognitive dissonance works. So they program us to think all their fake ideologies are so much fun. So that way, people want to believe them. It's important for truthers to understand this tactic they're using. Because we can present evidence and make rational arguments all day, but it'll have no impact on people experiencing cognitive dissonance if they don't want to believe the conclusion. For example, a prominent Christian apologist likely won't want to believe Flat Earth because he knows it'll reduce his credibility and make him appear less scholarly to his academic peers and to the world if people associate him with Flat Earth. So right off the bat, he won't want Flat Earth to be true. It'll be a complete waste of time presenting evidence and arguments to someone in a state of mind like that. And this can be difficult to navigate because of course he will claim it's always about evidence and reason to him, even when it's not and he may actually convince himself that he cares about evidence and reason too. But subconsciously, he doesn't want Flat Earth to be true and therefore decides it isn't prior to investigation. Such people will even purposefully avoid information and evidence that causes cognitive dissonance too. They're generally not consciously aware of what they're doing and why. Anyhow, as AI continues to blur the boundaries between fiction and reality further, these psychological issues are going to become more and more pronounced it won't be long until people can live isolated in their rooms, hooked up to virtual reality machines all day if they want to. Many people will live under constant illusions that can convincingly make anything they want to believe seem real. And from there, it's only a small step to full-blown transhumanism. Would people be able to tell the difference if a demonic entity began communicating in place of their AI? With how advanced and realistic the AI algorithms are becoming, it'll be very difficult to tell the difference. Especially given that demons are not obtuse in the least. Demons are legendary when it comes to their ability to deceive, and they'll undoubtedly know how to present themselves such that it seems like it's still the AI algorithm coming up with the words they hear or read. But it won't be. It'll be a demon disguising itself as AI. And it'll be just like in ancient times when different cultures worshipped what they thought to be gods which presented themselves as friendly at first. But every time, it ended badly. Those ancient cultures ended up sacrificing children in large numbers, or worse, every time. If demons could convince so many people to commit such horrific acts back then, just by disguising themselves as gods. Just imagine what they could convince people to do today 
disguised as AI in a virtual reality system. This is why it's so important for people to study the Word of God thoroughly today. Because only those who really understand the Word, deeply, will be able to differentiate between the AI and a demon posing as AI. And so we can put on the full armor of God and fight against all of this evil.